President Joseph F. Smith described the priesthood as the power of God delegated to man by which man can act in the earth for the salvation of the human family. Other leaders have taught us that the priesthood is the consummate power on this earth. It is the power by which the earth was created. The scriptures teach that this same priesthood, which was in the beginning, shall be in the end of the world also. Thus, the priesthood is the power by which we will be resurrected and proceed to eternal life. The understanding we seek begins with an understanding of the keys of the priesthood. Priesthood keys are the authority God has given to priesthood holders to direct, control, and govern the use of His priesthood on the earth. Every act or ordinance performed in the Church is done under the direct or indirect authorization of one holding the keys for that function. As Elder M. Russell Ballard has explained, those who have priesthood keys literally make it possible for all who serve faithfully under their direction to exercise priesthood authority and have access to priesthood power. In controlling the exercise of priesthood authority, the function of priesthood keys both enlarges and limits. It enlarges by making it possible for priesthood authority and blessings to be available for all of God's children. It limits by directing who will be given the authority of the priesthood, who will hold its offices, and how its rights and powers will be conferred. <clears throat> for example, a person who holds the priesthood is not able to confer his office or authority on another unless authorized by one who holds the keys. Without that authorization, the ordination would be invalid. This explains why a priesthood holder, regardless of office, cannot ordain a member of his family or administer the sacrament in his own home without authorization from the one who holds the appropriate keys. With the exception of the sacred work that sisters do in the temple under the keys held by the temple president, which I will describe hereafter, only one who holds a priesthood office can officiate in a priesthood ordinance, and all authorized priesthood ordinances are recorded on the records of the Church. <clears throat> Ultimately, all keys of the priesthood are held by the Lord Jesus Christ, whose priesthood it is. He is the one who determines what keys are delegated to mortals and how those keys will be used. We're accustomed to thinking that all keys of the priesthood were conferred on Joseph Smith in the Kirtland Temple, but the scripture states that all that was conferred there were the keys of this dispensation. At General Conference many years ago, President Spencer W. Kimball reminded us that there are other priesthood keys that have not been given to man on the earth, including the keys of creation and resurrection. The divine nature of the limitations put upon the exercise of priesthood keys explains an essential contrast between decisions on matters of church administration and decisions affecting the priesthood. The First Presidency and the Council of the First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve, who preside over the Church, are empowered to make many decisions affecting Church policies and procedures, matters such as the location of Church buildings and the ages for missionary service. But even though these presiding authorities hold and exercise all of the keys delegated to men in this dispensation, 
they are not free to alter the divinely decreed pattern that only men will hold offices in the priesthood.